I was cooking, chopping carrots, and a bit of the carrot fell on the floor. And it was a stew. And I said, two second rule, picked up the carrot and flung it back into the pot. And the next thing was, there was a whack on the back of my head that literally, literally made me see stars. Afterwards, I came to realize it was a, a giant pepper mill that he'd hit me on the back of the head with. I couldn't hide from it because it, it was plain to see. And that was when my ex-wife had flicked a lick cigarette in my face and it had burnt all above my eye. And it really was about controlling me, what I ate, how I dressed, you know, couldn't wear certain clothes, you know, sort of really put you down for your parenting, for, you know, your intimate relationships, and it was all like you were no good at any things that you did. You make excuses. I made excuses that I was spending a lot of time with my daughter. He needed me to be with him. You make the excuses. I'm going to try better. I will try better. This is my fault. Domestic abuse is an issue that's hidden in plain sight. It's not something that people talk about quite readily. There's a huge element of shame and stigma attached to it. And unfortunately, some of the misconceptions around it make it much harder for people to access um, support. Domestic abuse takes so many different forms. I think the most well-recognised forms of abuse would be violent, physical or sexual abuse. But there are so many others. There is emotional abuse, verbal abuse, mental or psychological abuse, there's financial abuse, there is coercive control, isolation, even women who have fled the abusive situation or relationship can still be subjected to abuse in the form of harassment, stalking, online abuse and threats. One in four women experience domestic abuse and one in six men experience domestic abuse at some point in their lives. Rather shockingly, a woman is assaulted every six seconds in her home in Britain. Um, and that speaks for itself, just how prevalent this issue is. Two women a week are killed at the, as a result of domestic abuse by a former partner or a current partner. And an estimated 39,000 babies under the age of one live in a household where there is domestic abuse. 95% of cases of domestic abuse also involve economic abuse, which concerns the restriction of access to money and finances or the control of resources and assets. There can be a real range of behaviours and it can be really difficult to spot. So some of the things we might look out for are the control of money. So this might be restricting access to someone's bank account, telling them how they can spend their money, controlling who has access to financial information, for example. It can also look at things like putting debt in someone's name, taking out lines of credit in someone's name, for example. Anyone can be a victim of abuse and that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions that domestic abuse um, only happens in deprived areas, people with lower socioeconomic backgrounds, and that simply isn't the truth. It doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, what education you've had, what knowledge you've gained over the years, where you work, where you don't work, anyone can be a victim of domestic abuse. There are many reasons why people experiencing domestic abuse may be reluctant to speak up or seek help from fears around their personal safety to concerns about being judged by their family, friends or colleagues. So there was one day where I was sitting with a colleague in his kitchen and he just leaned over to me, and I'll never forget it, he leaned over to me and he just said, that's one bruise too many. And I knew that he knew. And I was, do you know, instead of Going to him for help, I was mortified. I was so ashamed that I had let someone see this sin, this shameful, dirty laundry of mine. I was so embarrassed. I blamed myself, I used to say. I caused it, you know, I, I stopped. Um, he would stop if I didn't do certain things, so I tried to avoid things that I said, things that I did. Uh, mentioning people, you know, smiling at people, just looking at other people or smiling at other people would create him just to hit me in public. 
there were times I did think about ending my own life because I just hated myself, hated the situation that I was in and completely blamed myself for the situation. Domestic abuse, I believe, still comes with a lot of stigma, so it can be difficult for people to realise or recognise that they are being subjected to it. I think the stigma is that you're considered weak or you're considered to be dramatic. A lot of people still don't believe that domestic abuse is as widespread an issue as it actually is. They can belittle or diminish experiences of abuse. Domestic abuse has a ripple effect. It's not just the individual experiencing domestic abuse that it impacts. It impacts all sorts of relationships, family relationships, but m most importantly the children because they really are the forgotten victims of abuse. We know that experiencing domestic abuse has long-lasting, life-changing implications. Domestic abuse awareness is massively important to employers. You know, a lot of businesses will think domestic abuse is something that happens behind closed doors, which is reflected in the fact that, you know, in our country, in the UK alone, they reckon that only about 5% of all workplaces have a domestic abuse policy or guidance, which is shocking and worrying in itself. But domestic abuse isn't something that just happens behind closed doors. 75% on average of victims or survivors will report that the abuse followed them to their workplace.